<laughs> the price of buying a home in the U.S. is going up. According to new data out this morning, prices rose 6.5% over last year. Joining us to break it down is Javier David. He's the managing editor for business and markets at Axios and also a CBS News contributor. Uh, all right, Javier, break down the data. What does it show us about affordability and what's driving the increase? Uh, and also, this is a three-part question, which states saw the biggest <laughs> increase? <laughs> well, it tells us something that we don't already know, which is we have a real affordability crisis. Um, the case Schiller data uh, that released this morning showed the 20 biggest uh, metro areas rose for 11 straight months, um, hit a record high. Uh, the major sort of price increases um, amongst those were seen mainly in Detroit, uh, Miami, uh, New York, some of the hottest sort of markets in the country. Uh, the broader measure, the national index also rose. It's up about 5%, more than 5% over the last year. Um, you know, we are looking at what is the convergence of mortgage rates that are, again, spiking comfortably above 7%. Home prices are also high now, as we see. Um, it's just a sort of toxic brew that means that people are not uh, willing to sell houses and the people that are actually looking for them uh, are not, don't have a lot of stock or don't have a lot of affordable options. Okay, so prices are rising, but we are expecting mortgage rates hopefully to go down later on this year. So would that make it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Well, uh, we were, ho the whole active word here, I think, is hopefully. Um, we were, we're in a different place now than we were even a month ago. Uh, I think markets were expecting the Federal Reserve to start cutting rates sometime in the first half. Um, we've had a run of unexpectedly hot inflation data. That means that the Fed is not necessarily going to hike rates again, uh, but they're not in a rush to cut. So all of the hopes and dreams that we had built around this idea that the Federal Reserve was going to be giving us easier policy, the timetable is being pushed back a little bit. And that means uh, if you were on the sidelines waiting for a better, a more favorable rate, um, you may have to wait a little bit longer. So it will actually help once the cuts start taking effect, um, and those cuts are unlikely to be seen before June, um, you're, you, you'll you have a little bit more of uh, what I guess you would consider it. No, I wouldn't call it a buyer's market because it's still going to be uh, pretty high in terms of rates. Um, and these prices don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon either. Uh, PCE data is due out on Thursday. What should we expect? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, it's one of the Fed's uh, cl most closely watched gauges. They, um, it's a broader measure of the things that you see um, in terms of CPI. Um, we're hoping that what we saw last month in terms of inflation was a bit of a one-off. Um, hopefully, hopefully, again, there's that word, uh, kind of uh, a confirmation that maybe the data that we saw in January was you know, just one month's worth of data and that we can continue this disinflation trend. Um, but again, demand remains really high. Consumers are spending, but uh, they're starting to get behind on some of their bills. So it's one of these things to keep a watch. And we uh, at Axios had a great interview with John Williams, who's the uh, New York Fed's president. And he said that this is actually something of an encouraging sign. When you see delinquencies rise, it means consumers are starting to get a little tired. So that's really key to the whole inflation story. When does demand start to tail off in a way, in an appreciable way um, that brings down prices? Yeah, and speaking of consumers, before we let you go, I want to ask about some major news. We're hearing uh, Macy's is going to be closing around 150 stores. Are you surprised about this? This is an interesting one. Um, Macy's has been struggling brick and mortar wise for a while, but their online channel has been actually, um, you know, a real driver for what uh, their sales have been. Um, this is for them a pivot to luxury. So while they're closing some of the flagship Macy's brands, they're actually channeling more to Bloomingdale's. They're opening more stores, um, two of their luxury brands, Bloomingdale's and Blue Mercury. If, interesting story. Luxury has been doing quite well in this environment. You've seen a lot of encouraging news from uh, brands like Ralph Lauren, um, LVMH. These are all big names um, in the luxury space. Uh, and those consumers are still continuing to spend and at a healthy clip. And it's making these companies bolstering them. So it's actually two stories. One, they're downsizing in their traditional sort of more down market category but they're putting a bet on luxury, which is really, really uh, an encouraging story at this particular time. Really interesting. Okay, Javier, Divi, thanks so much.